Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and I thought I'd do another sort of rambling uh, discussion video for you today. Um, and what I wanted to talk about today were, uh, it's a subject that really bugs me sometimes um, and I'm not singling anybody out here, um, but it's about bushcraft elitists. Um, now, what do I mean by that? Bushcraft elitists, <coughs> excuse me, um, basically there, there are some bushcrafters who have a very uh, either traditional or specific view of what bushcraft means um, and they kind of tout the fact that if you're not following bushcraft in the manner they believe is correct um, that you're not a proper bushcrafter and it's something I see quite often on, on uh, bushcraft groups and bushcraft forums that kind of thing um, and again this is not to single anybody out it's just a topic that seems to keep recurring um, now I appreciate that you know everyone has their own opinion um, my view is very much live, uh, uh, live and let live but um, you know I do take umbrage with the fact that some people seem to feel um, that they know better than everybody else and you know they, they like to point out to the fact that if somebody is doing something in a manner different to them um, where well, you're not a proper bushcrafter and you know oh you know you're just playing at it and that kind of thing um, now my view of bushcraft and again this is just my own opinion you know, I, I, I firmly believe that it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. I, I don't subscribe to the fact that there is one standard definition of bushcraft, because in my view there isn't. Um, now, you know, you could be a bushcrafter if you're going out for the odd day here and there. You could be a bushcrafter going out for a week or a month or more and surviving completely on your own, um, and pretty much everything in between. Um, you know, I know some people who focus very heavily on traditional skills, uh, things like fire lighting, shelter building, um, cordage making, all from natural materials, um, which, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, there are other people who go down the sort of the, uh, the not so much high tech, but the sort of the Gucci kit road, um, where you've got kind of all the newest um, and, you know, most up to date bits of equipment. Um, you know, there's people who do it on a real budget, there's people who spend loads of money um, and I think for me ultimately bushcraft is getting outdoors, spending time outdoors and whether it's whether you're only going out for an afternoon because that's all you're able to do, um, now whether that's to do with your age or your work commitments or family or anything, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, or whether you're going out for a long weekend or a week or more, you know, my view is bushcrafting is actually getting out there and doing something. Now that, that could be going out and practicing fire lighting, it could be going out and identifying flora and fauna, um, you know, it could be in any number of things. Um, and I think to me bushcraft is kind of a phrase, a um, fairly modern phrase for, for the, the way most of us use it at least, um, and it encompasses so many things that, you know, I, I really don't get this attitude of, you know, ah, you know, if, you, if you're not going out and spending, you know, a month away with just a wool blanket um, and a small pocket knife, you know, you're not a pro proper bushcrafter. Um, and I am paraphrasing there a little bit, but, you know, that that's the, generally the kind of attitude, you know, oh, you've, you've spent a hundred pounds on your knife, um, you're not a proper bushcrafter, you should be using something that you've hammered out yourself from a piece of scrap metal and, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and it, it really does bug me because, you know, who are... Who are, who are these people to say what I'm doing or what somebody else is doing is not proper bushcraft? Um, you know, and, and I appreciate, you know, this the view I'm giving now is my own opinion and some people won't agree with it, and that's absolutely fine. Um, but what does get me, and this, this kind of carries over into most walks of life, if someone has their own opinion on something, that's absolutely fine by me, but don't try and force it on other people. Um, as you can tell, I had a couple of conversations recently regarding this and it, it's kind of just sort of stuck in my mind a little bit, so I thought I'd just do a video about it. And I, I would be really genuinely interested to know what you guys think, um, not only about, you know, what does bushcraft mean to you? Um, you know, what do you see are the fundamentals of bushcraft? Um, and also, you know, your views on kind of people who have maybe said to you or, or, or you've heard about who, who believe that, you know, the bushcrafting that you or someone you know is going, are going out doing um, is not proper bushcraft. Um, and, you know, it, it's just one of those things. 
And to be honest, you know, bushcraft for me, as I say, is getting out there. Now, whether you know, I, I, I do different types of bushcraft depending on A, my mood, B, where I am, um, C, quite often who I'm with. Um, you know, I go out with friends of mine who are not massively into the whole bushcraft thing and we'll kind of focus on certain things, you know, firecraft seems to come up quite a lot um, and I think firecraft is one of those real nice fundamentals of bushcraft that when you're practicing it and when you get that flame and you can coax it into a fire um, it's such a feeling of kind of satisfaction um, and you know you've got something really tangible in front of you, it's a bit like wood carving you know, you take somebody out for the first time um, and you give them a, a, a little branch and a knife and you say, right, wh whittle that away until you get something that looks like a spoon. Um, and you have something in your hands that you can actually, you know, be, be very proud of the fact that you've made yourself. And that transfers to fire and cordage, building a shelter, all those kind of things. Um, uh, and I had a very um, long-winded argument with somebody um, regarding... Um, bushcraft knives and um, it was one of my videos from probably a couple of years ago now and I did a little comparison between a Mora um, and a Raymere's bushcraft knife. Now you, you've probably all seen those several times in my videos um, and there was a guy who came along um, and you know a particularly opinionated guy, a bit of an internet troll um, and he he was quite uh, quite aggressive in his views um, he's, uh, you know, spending, uh, you know, I think £400, I think it amounted to at the time on a knife, you know, you must be crazy and blah, 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 and all this. Um, and he couldn't quite grasp the, the concept um, that what I was doing was actually a comparison between the two, um, but also the fact that it doesn't really matter whether you spent £5, £50, £500 on a knife. The, the importance is that you can use it. Um, and you know, I, I know people that have gone out and got some really expensive setups, you know, really sort of Gucci bags and tents or hammocks and, and those kind of things. Um, and you know, you pay, you pay a bit more and, and you do generally get better quality in most cases. Um, but you know, there are people who will look at someone with some expensive kit and you're not a proper bushcrafter. You know, the, the essence of bushcraft is that everything is on a budget. Um, now I don't personally subscribe to that, um, but what I do subscribe to is the fact that it doesn't matter whether you're on a real shoestring budget or you've got loads and loads of money to burn. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what piece of kit you have, pr provided it's suitable for the job, and a, you know, a £5 knife, a £50 knife, or a £500 knife, in theory, should all be suitable for the job you're using it for. It's down to you and your own skill level. Um, so, you know, you can look at other things, you can say, do you know what, you can buy a £5 pair of boots or a £50 pair of boots. Generally, you can be pretty sure the £50 pair of boots is going to do you better than the £5 pair. Um, not always the case by any means, um, but again, you will have people, you know, and, and especially when brand names come into it, you know, I mentioned Ray Mears earlier, you know, you can look at things like Berghaus and North Face and, and these kind of bigger, slightly more expensive brands, um, as opposed to kind of, you know, maybe a supermarket owned brand um, outdoor jacket, for example. Um, and, you know, you, you can use both of them, they'll be absolutely fine, um, but you will have people that, and it works both ways. You'll get some people turning their nose up at the really cheap brand. Oh, you know, that's a load of rubbish. You know, you don't, you don't want to be using that. And likewise, you'll have someone who's been using maybe military surplus gear or something like that for their whole life and looking at these kind of two or three hundred pound jackets going, oh, that's a load of, yeah, waste of money, load of rubbish. Don't need all that crap. You know, you're not doing things properly. You're, you're just doing it because, you know, you've got the money to burn sort of thing. Um, and, and as I say, just generally this whole attitude of, people looking at other people and sort of getting fixated on the fact that you don't practice bushcraft in the same manner that I do um, and therefore you're not doing it properly or you're not a real bushcrafter or you know you're not a proper bushcrafter um, and you know I really think you know the, the whole ethos is just wrong you know I appreciate nothing's going to change that and it's not going to stop um, but I just wanted to give you guys maybe something to think about when I don't know if any of you have a, a particular view on this, um, if, you know, if you're one of the people that I'm talking about. Um, but, you know, I, I just think, you know, everybody has their own way of doing things. Um, you know, everyone has their own restrictions, whether that's age, budget, commitments, um, personal preference even. 
And, you know, I mean, I, what I would say to some of these people, um, and, you know, some of them, don't get me wrong, very good bushcrafters. Others are, I suppose, what I would class as armchair bushcrafters, and there's quite a few of those around on, on bushcraft groups and things like that. Uh, but, you know, these kind of people, you know, all I would say is that, you know, if somebody, if you think someone's doing bushcrafting wrong, you know, just take a moment to think about it and think, you know, well, why, why have they gone down that route? You know, is there a reason behind it? And also have a think, it's actually, if these people are actually getting out and they're doing it, you know, could you go and do the same? Because if you can't, you probably need to shut up a little bit. Um, but, you know, that was really it, guys. You know, I, I didn't want to have too much of a rant. It was, it was a few conversations I've had recently, and I just wanted to kind of get it out there. Um, you know, it would be very nice to think in this day and age, we can all look at each other and say, do you know what? Um, this guy does things this way, that guy does things that way. You know, there's things I'm, I, I like to think I'm relatively good at, and there are things I know that I'm not so good at. Um, you know, traditional things like, like friction fires, for example, I'm absolutely useless. Um, but things like fire steel and flint and steel, I'm fairly comfortable with and I'm fairly happy I can get a fire going. Um, shelter building, as a general rule, I'm pretty much okay with. Can I make something that's completely watertight in really bad condition? Probably not, and would I want to stay in that? Again, probably not if I had another option available. Um, but anyway, guys, that was it. I've rambled on for far too long. I think we're hitting about 11 minutes on this video now. Um, but as I say, just a, just a topic I wanted to get out there. I'd be really interested to hear your views and your thoughts on this and any experiences you've had along these lines. Um, as I say, just as a general rule in life, um, I'm, I'm not a big fan of elitists and, and people who think that they're better than other people because of the, because of the way they do something and, and that knock other people for it. Uh, but anyway, guys, that's it. So as usual, comments and questions in the box below. Hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I hope you'll all join me next time. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.